This video is made possible by Brilliant. Learn complex subjects intuitively for 20% off by going to brilliant.org slash real life lore. So, imagine that you're the captain of a boat with a lot of expensive cargo, but you're stuck in LA, and you need to get over to New York. You currently have two or maybe three options of getting there. You can A, take the very long and somewhat dangerous route all the way down below South America, B, take the also really long but extra zany and cold route up through the Canadian archipelago, or C, take the shortcut across Panama through the Panama Canal, but depending on the size of your ship, this might not be an option for you. The Panama Canal is only so wide and so deep, so if your ship is too big, you won't be allowed to cross, which means that you still have to choose between either option A or option B, as people have done for hundreds of years now. But what if there was another option, a choice D? The flow of international shipping and trade across the world is, for the most part, determined by Earth's geography, and Earth's geography has certain limitations. For example, there's an entire continent that kind of blocks the way between Europe and Asia, and there's two entire continents that separate the Atlantic Ocean from the Pacific Ocean. Boats don't really travel through land, so you normally don't have any other choice but to travel around all of this land in order to get to the other sides. But there's a few strategic areas around the world where it's theoretically possible to dig canals and create shortcuts between two sides of water. Some of these have already been built, like the Kiel Canal that allows transportation between the Baltic and the North Sea without having to sail around Denmark, or the Suez Canal that allows transportation between the Mediterranean and Red Seas without having to sail all the way around Africa. So in the Americas, there are three locations where a canal shortcut between the Atlantic and Pacific could theoretically be built that map geeks have been talking about for centuries. They are the Isthmus of Tehuantepec in Mexico. Mexico, the narrow stretches of land in Nicaragua on either side of the big lake in the middle of the country, and Panama. For hundreds of years, all three of these areas were used to transport supplies over land from one ship in the Atlantic to another ship in the Pacific, but this was still quite inefficient. The land was full of rainforests, mosquitoes, and dangerous animals like jaguars that made the logistics of transporting supplies over land from one ship to another pretty dangerous and hard to do. A canal would change everything, and the easiest one to build was always going to be in Panama because it's the narrowest piece of land out of all of the three choices. The Tehuantepec Isthmus is 200 kilometers between the Gulf of Mexico and the Pacific. The Nicaragua route is 153 kilometers across land between the Caribbean, Lake Nicaragua, and the Pacific, while the Panama route is only 80 kilometers long. And so, the United States finished constructing the Panama Canal in 1914, and it changed the way that trade flowed forever afterwards allowing ships to just hop over land instead of traveling all the way around South America. But there was a bit of a problem that I mentioned earlier. The Panama Canal wasn't built very wide, so not all modern ships can get through. Super big modern container ships aren't fitting in a canal that was built over a century ago, and so they all still have to take the long route around South America. If a brand new canal could be built across one of the other two potential canal routes, it could be built up to modern standards with enough capacity for these big cargo ships to actually travel through. This was the idea that came to the Chinese construction company HKND in 2013, who entered into negotiations with the Nicaraguan government to construct a canal across the country. That year, Nicaragua gave HKND a 50-year concession to build the canal and operate it, with the potential to be extended for another 50 years afterwards. If it was built, this would have effectively given China a century of control over one of the most important strategic locations locations in the world for international trade. Later on in the 2020s, growth in international trade is expected to cause significant congestion and delay issues in the Panama Canal. So in 2013, the Panama Canal was simply not expected to be large enough to accommodate that increased demand in trade and shipping that would occur later on through the 21st century. So the construction of another canal in the area to handle the higher demand appeared to be logical, and HKND could just smell the opportunity. The plan was rather straightforward. HKND would begin by constructing opposite ports on the Pacific and Caribbean sides of Nicaragua that could handle large container ships. Work would then begin on the first short portion of the canal between the Pacific and Lake Nicaragua. A channel would be dug into the bottom of the lake to allow larger cargo ships to travel through it. And then the second portion of the canal would be built from Lake Nicaragua out to the Caribbean. Whereafter, the two ports would be adapted into international shipping ports on either side. However, there were 
were so many ridiculous problems associated with the project that it's hard to even talk about all of them in such a short video. First of all, the cost of the project was estimated to be around $40 billion by HKND, and HKND never put forward a very clear case for how exactly they planned to come up with that much money, and neither did Nicaragua for that matter. The billionaire owner of HKND lost 80% of his net worth in the 2015 Chinese stock market crash just two years after HKND and Nicaragua came to their agreement to actually build the canal. Nicaragua claimed that the project would create a quarter of a million jobs inside of the country and that it would lead to Nicaragua becoming a first world country, while HKND, on the other hand, suggested that it would only create around 50,000 jobs and that at least half of those would just be workers imported from China. HKND was further given the authority to expropriate land from Nicaraguan citizens around the canal construction site, which would have led to the expulsion and relocation of around 100,000 people in the country, or in other words, about 1.5% of all Nicaraguans. Needless to say, that wasn't exactly very popular with the 1.5% of the population that was getting forcibly relocated. And then there's all of the potentially catastrophic environmental issues. Lake Nicaragua is the largest source of fresh water for all of Central America and, well, introducing the lake to a canal that's connected to the salty ocean would be bad enough, but imagine the potential disaster that could happen if an oil tanker moving through the canal happened to have a spill in the middle of the largest source of fresh water for 47 million people. 400,000 hectares of rainforest were going to be destroyed that included the habitats of at least 22 endangered species, not to even mention the disruption caused in the migration routes of countless other species. Many people considered the Nicaragua Canal's construction to be an environmental catastrophe, but the ultimate reasons for why it failed were economic ones. Not only did HKND's billionaire owner lose 80% of his net worth in a single bad year of financial losses, but the Panama Canal initiated an expansion project of their own that concluded in 2016 that doubled the canal's capacity for ships. Now, all but the absolute biggest of ships in the world can fit through the Panama Canal, which made the prospect of blowing 40 billion bucks on another canal in Nicaragua a much harder pill to swallow. Eventually, HKND entered into severe financial difficulties themselves, and in 2018, they shut down their home office in China without leaving any address or telephone number for anybody in Nicaragua or anywhere else to contact them at. No construction on the canal ever began, and it's looking like at this rate, it's probably never actually going to happen, unless some other crazy company comes around with $40 billion to blow on something that might not even work out that well. None of this was even considering the fact that actually digging and filling hundreds of miles of canals through the rainforest with tropical diseases like yellow fever and malaria would be a massively difficult project to complete even with the money. It's unbelievable to think about this today, but around 40,000 workers actually died over the course of the construction of the Panama Canal due to tropical diseases in the area. Can you imagine even 10% of those deaths being acceptable to a modern construction company? It's absolutely wild. So insane costs would have to be put into developing the area in Nicaragua around the canal with modern hospitals and trained medical staff in addition to all the other necessary construction and labor costs. The project is ultimately one of the most insane construction projects ever proposed during the 21st century. It would have changed the shape of the world forever, but in the end, at least for now, it seems like we just don't really need it. Something that everybody needs, though, is a better understanding of math and science and how they relate to our everyday lives. If you're bored stuck indoors all the time right now like me, it's a perfect opportunity to do something productive and keep yourself entertained next by heading over to Brilliant. Brilliant is a math and science learning platform that gives you new daily challenges every day that are not only fun, but that also help teach you new concepts by applying them. And if you like that challenge and you want to learn more, you can check out the course quizzes 
pauses that go into more detail. It's the perfect way to learn a little something new every day without it ever feeling stressful or overwhelming. So to start trying out the daily challenges and to learn more about Brilliant, go ahead and click the link down in the description or go to brilliant.org slash real life lore. You can sign up for free. Plus, if you're one of the first 200 to sign up at that link, you'll also get 20% off of a premium subscription and you'll be supporting real life lore at the same time. And as always, thank you for watching.